Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brick Workshop. I've made a lot of furniture in my time and certainly uh, quite a lot of chairs like this one I made probably about eight years ago. But a number of people have asked me whether uh, the Festool Domino DF500 is a suitable tool for making furniture. You may have seen the tables I've made. Uh, I've made several videos about those using this machine and it's simply brilliant. But specifically, people wanted to know whether things like a chair could be made with the Domino 500. And the answer is, yes, it can. It's a very simple item to make. And over the next three videos, I hope to show you just how easy it is to do. Let me take you through the design concept. Now, most of the chair is made from cherry, and these are offcuts that I've had lying around the workshop for some time. But this center field here is made of walnut, and I wanted a contrast. And this is uh, a very simple concept for the seat part. You could, if you wished, uh, have a piece of plywood there, and then cover that with a piece of foam, and then put some material over it. Now these seat backs, the top one here and the one here, are curved. And these were really easy to do. I used my Festool MFT3 and my router, with a trammel arrangement and it was very easy indeed. Now these rear legs are curved and it's a very gentle curve and it's very easy to make these. Uh, the front legs are just plain rectangles of straight wood. Now the domino joints around the top here, the four sets of joints use eight millimeter dominoes which are 50 millimeters long. Then all of the other joints, the four rails underneath here and these two back rails all use 40 millimeter long, six millimeter dominoes. All of my stock has the cross-sectional uh, dimension correct. Uh, I've just got to cut it to length now. Uh, but before I do that, I want to concentrate on this big piece, which is going to form both of the uh, pieces which form the rear leg and the back of the chair here, one on each side. And they're going to be cut uh, from this piece with them sort of nested within each other. So I've got to cut it out quite carefully. Now, I'm building this chair really to suit the wood I've got available rather than uh, going for the absolute design of choice like I did with this chair. Uh, but uh, I can still give it a little bit of character. Now this chair was uh, one of several and so uh, when I went about making this I made up a, a pattern and, and I used that pattern to create multiple uh, versions of this uh, rear section here. But as we're just making one chair, I'm going to use a different technique. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting this uh, piece of wood uh, four centimetres or 40 millimetres longer uh, than it needs to be. I'm just marking uh, where we would want to cut it when all this work is done. So that's 20 millimetres from there and 20 millimetres at this end. Now the next thing I need to do from the plan is to mark the centre line of where the domino joint will be uh, which keeps the leg uh, attached to the uh, side rails. And that's 425 from the bottom of the chair. Uh, and so in my case with the extra 20 it's 445 millimetres. So that's my centre line through there. Now if you imagine in this area here there will be a uh, rail going in something like this uh, and the face here has to be flat uh, in order to take the rail. We don't want it trying to be mounted where the, there is any curvature. And to be on the safe side I'm going 15 millimetres beyond uh, each side and putting a pencil line and this will stop me from trying to do any curved work in this area. We need to protect uh, the flat face here and one we're going to create uh, down here which I'll show you in a minute in order to get the joint correct. Now in the past when I've been making up templates I've used a, a steel rule uh, in uh, whatever way, I found a way of clamping it to the surface and then drawn my pencil line. Uh, but it's going to be different this time. Now what I've done is I've measured 30 millimeters from this face edge here uh, and made a mark and the same at this end and made a mark 
and this will allow me to make the right judgment for the size of piece of wood I have as to where I should uh, lay things out. And this is what I want to do for this piece, is a curve something like that. And this is a reason why I have the MFT3, because having a workbench with a multitude of holes in like this does allow you to do this sort of work very, very easily. And if you want to get a, a greater degree of curve, what you do is you twist this end around a little bit, and that will then allow you to uh, have a little bit more curved detail. And that's what I've just done. I've rotated that a bit, and now you can see that's created a slightly more elegant curve. And this first one we do will be the pattern for the second, and so I'm only really concerned at this stage of getting this one right. So that's that end. So there we have our first two lines which define uh, the uh, part of the uh, back of the chair uh, which you would be sitting against, and the chair itself would be this side. Now, this is the top end of the uh, rear leg element um, and frame and I've got my 30 millimeter mark which I used to do the first curve uh, and I've now put a mark uh, 20 millimeters from that uh, and that will give uh, uh, the rear part a sort of thinning effect as it gets higher up and that will look a little more elegant uh, and at this end I've got a mark which is 30 from the first one so it's 60 from the edge uh, and so these are the two marks, 20 at this end and 30 at this end uh, that I'm aiming for. But I've got to be careful in this middle section because I need to make sure I have at least 30 millimeters here in order to have the depth for the domino joint. And I'm going to look down here. Now this one I can put under a bit of tension that way so that it can make that curve. And I'm now just looking to see that uh, the finished shape is uh, something which I think is uh, good enough. And it's not too bad. I am just holding on to this centerpiece just in case it wished to move, which it doesn't, which is good. So there we go. So that's the first leg marked out. And it's essential for this concept that I have that when the first leg is used as the template for the second, that it moves parallel this way. That then ensures that the, uh, the top, but more importantly, the bottom uh, is in exactly the same plane. And it also ensures uh, that uh, the face here is at uh, right angles uh, and perfect uh, for the joint like so. However, what I don't want to do is to use this second leg when it's as a pattern uh, to create what is effectively that flat face for the second leg. The reason is it won't be quite as perfect as this one is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create that face for the second leg using a uh, cutter in the writer table and I'm going to have it uh, going parallel to this face and making a groove here. And the other thing to set up is where uh, we can start and stop our cut. Uh, now, I've got uh, this centre line uh, lined up with what I perceive to be the centre line of the cutter, which is down there. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that this is parallel to the fence, uh, which it is certainly close enough for government work at this stage. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to make a mark on here one there and one there. So that's the limit of my exploitation, if you like. Um, and it doesn't need to be terribly accurate because, of course, we're going to be finishing these legs. So there's my mark there and there. So what it now means is that I start my cut with the center line at this mark and I continue the cut to the center lines at that mark. And that will then put the groove all the way along there. And I can then turn this over because my cutter isn't long enough to go all the way through. And there's my center line again. And I repeat the process on this side. So 
So there it is, uh, all ready now for me to cut out the first leg and then use that uh, as a template for the second. So we're at the stage now where I've just smoothed off uh, this first cut edge uh, on the first leg. Now we haven't cut the other side of it yet, and so therefore we still have this guaranteed flat edge along here. Now, what I'm now going to do is to line this up with this centre line through the centre line which you see here. And I'm going to also make sure uh, that my uh, ends are lined up perfectly as well. So. Absolutely essential that this part here, uh, where we've righted out, is absolutely flush. Right, you can now see why I've got the extra 20mm on the end here. It allows me to put a screw hole which will go through the bottom of this leg into uh, the bottom of the other. Uh, and this way we can hold the two pieces together without the need uh, to uh, have any clamps involved in the process. That's one. And that's the other. And there we have the two pieces held together. It now means that I can cut through uh, this, uh, what is effectively the front side here uh, and cut through that through both pieces uh, and then I can do uh, the, the roughing out at the back here and then use this as a template uh, to get the back perfect as this one is. And that's that done, now I can clean it up uh, ready to finish this piece.